Tea is a 35-year-old farmer who lives with her family in Samaki village in Takeo province. She has four children, Strayon, Sophia, Dee and Vanith, aged between 11 to 13, all of whom help Tea take care of their poultry. As her parents and grandparents before her used to do, Tea raises poultry in a traditional way, wherein chickens roam freely in the backyard with little or no biosecurity. Now, avian influenza is threatening the only way T and her neighbors know about raising their poultry. To control the spread of the avian influenza virus from poultry to poultry, experts are advising backyard farmers to fence their poultry, separate ducks from chickens, quarantine new poultry, report sick or dead poultry to authorities, etc. T has heard of avian influenza prevention messages on radio and TV and has seen posters and leaflets produced by the Food and Agriculture Organization and partners. She has also seen posters featuring super chicken and knows it warns people of the danger posed by avian influenza. She knows all the prevention messages and can recite them by heart. Is T doing them? of avian influenza, which started in 2003, have had a significant impact on the livelihoods of these rural farmers and upon poultry traders and consumers also. There have been 22 detected outbreaks of HPAI in poultry in the country, as well as seven fatal human cases caused by this deadly virus. As long as HPAI circulates in poultry, it poses a constant threat to food security, livelihoods and health of poor farmers in Cambodia. In order to eliminate this highly pathogenic virus at its source in poultry, FAO is assisting the Department of Animal Health and Production to deal with avian influenza by strengthening its abilities and capacity in surveillance in the market and at village level, laboratory diagnosis, reporting and response, biosecurity, socio-economic and livelihood studies, and supportive and protective legislative environments. Tackling the disease at its source in poultry and waterfowl is the single best hope for achieving a sustainable reduction in animal-to-animal -animal transmission of the virus, and thereby reducing the risk of animal-to-human transmission so averting the much-feared human influenza pandemic. FAO considers communication targeting people in close contact with poultry as crucial in avian influenza control, prevention and elimination. Effective communication increases the level of acceptance and implementation by the target audience of the control and prevention measures that FAO is uh, promoting in Cambodia. The efficacy of these measures depends largely uh, upon the extent to which the general public understands and is convinced of the rationale to adopt them. It is for this reason that FAO has commissioned a participatory study to understand why, despite high levels of awareness, Many rural backyard farmers continue to engage in behaviors that facilitate poultry to poultry and poultry to human transmission of avian influenza. Benjamin Hickler, a medical anthropologist, is conducting this project that aims to involve the communities in the policies and practices that affect their lives and in the development of better communication strategies that will uh, bring about the desired change in behavior. We and FAO believe that in order to be effective, communication strategies must take into account people's cultural and material lives, their needs and responsibilities, their attitudes and commitment, their beliefs about health, 
illness and disease transmission and the priorities and constraints that influence their daily practices. This anthropological participatory study was designed to complement a number of large-scale sociological studies that have been conducted by a number of organizations recently in Cambodia. One of the findings of these studies is that despite very high awareness of AI and basic AI messages, a variety of high-risk behaviors still continue as before. Things have not changed. We have a good picture of at least the highest risk areas of the country in terms of what people do and how people do it. We decided to use flexible qualitative tools, two of the most simple uh, focus group discussions where you get a variety of people together and try to create a relaxed atmosphere but still maintain enough structure to keep the conversation on topic and uh, facilitate making a record of the event for future analysis. Key informant interviews work much the same way. When people start to talk, you have the flexibility to follow up if something interesting or unexpected emerges. We've decided to focus on five primary groups. Uh, first, we sampled participants from villages who are very much like the participants that have been included in the uh, samples for the large-scale sociological surveys. Uh, second, we focused on communities that have had outbreaks of AI. Third group, village that have large amounts of small-scale, household-level poultry enterprises using ducks. The fourth was people who were not included in the livelihood surveys or the large-scale cat surveys. Um, and very little is known in terms of awareness of AI. For this sample, we went to Ratanakiri province and held focus groups with village chiefs and commune chief in the in Benlong district. And we also went to a Lao-speaking community, a bilingual Lao-speaking community, uh, where we found virtually no awareness of AI. The last group we focused on were poultry buyers and vendors. Uh, instead of using focus group discussions, here we basically just use observation and short and formal interviews. Our focus group discussions took place in a variety of settings, uh, usually outdoors, sometimes under people's homes, sometimes in their yard under the shade of a tree. Uh, one was in a schoolhouse, uh, one was in a public space associated with the pagoda. A focus group discussion in a rural setting, um, especially if it's truly participatory, can often be a little bit chaotic. Occasionally we'd get quite a gathering of spectators, often children, and one or two individuals of the opposite gender would join in the discussion. In the end, we managed to conduct 20 focus groups with over 150 men and 190 women in 13 districts and seven different provinces in Cambodia. We also conducted multiple observations and short key informant interviews with poultry buyers and vendors. The way we generated our sample was first meeting with uh, FAO trainers for village animal health workers. Each trainer described the characteristics of their respective provinces. Uh, we targeted certain districts and sometimes specific villages. We went out with the village animal health worker, drove to the commune chief's office, described the study, uh, asked them a little bit about the characteristics of the villages in the commune. In many cases, the commune chief made recommendations based on what we were looking for about which village chiefs we should talk with. Then we drove, met with the village chief, and in many cases, the village chief was able to quickly gather together a group of either men or women 
Uh, in a few cases, because it was planting season when we were doing this study, uh, we were unable to immediately organize a group, so we set up a time to meet either later in the day or in a future day to do the focus group discussions. The question for us is, what do people already do to protect their poultry and their families? Basically, you can break this into two questions. What do people do to protect their poultry from disease? The fact is that already there are a number of things people do. ແລະໃຫ້ຍັງເຄີຍສາຍນັ້ນ <laughs> <laughs> ຕ້ອງຕ້ອງຕ້ອງຕ້ອງຕ້ອງຕ້ອງຕ້ອງຕ້ອງຕ້ອງຕ້ອງຕ້ອງຕ້ອງຕ້ອງຕ້ອງ